This is the Caterham Project V. Now this is a concept car that previews what a Caterham might look like with an actual roof and bodywork that's more than just stylish tinfoil. But scarier than that, this is a lightweight, electric Caterham. Cue the comment section catching fire right about now. But how did we get here from the Severn? Well, Caterham 7s are British-built sports cars that are the epitome of pared-back, no-frills, back-to-basics, nerve-janglers. Don't get me wrong, I love a 7, but now that I have respect for my lower back, a Caterham tends to look like a mobile torture chamber. Any car whose idea of luxury is a clip-on roof and a heater that exclusively parboils your left knee is probably not going to be anything else than ruthless on the road. And that's pretty much the case. Caterhams are old-school and proud. And my goodness, I'm glad they exist. But the company isn't daft. You've got to look to the future or you'll become nothing but the past. So it's time to meet Son of Seven, the Project V. Although this is very definitely not a seven. Could just be a 10 though. Yes, that is a Caterham with a roof and actual bodywork. And I happen to think it looks really grown up. I mean, let's look at it. It's got this big bubble of a front wheel arch, which sort of caves down the side of the car and then runs back up into the second bubble, which is this slicked coupe roof line that then runs down into a third bubble, which is the rear haunch, which looks really muscular. At the front, you've got a central grille that's flanked by two wide vents that makes the car look low and wide. And I actually think those headlights carry a hint of Porsche. Or maybe that's just me. This might be a bit weird, but I like the way it sits. There's a defined waspy waist and a kind of layered rear end that's like a tasty carbon cake. The suspension is double wishbone and fully adjustable front and rear, and the wheels are 19 inches up front and 20 at the back. It's a proper sporty looking thing with plenty of potential. This is supposed to be a concept car, but it looks pretty real to me. It reminds me of the Caterham 21 of the mid-1990s, but there's also more than a hint of the stillborn Caterham C120, a failed co-pro with Alpine, and the Gianarelli Design 1, which is no surprise because Caterham's chief designer is um, Anthony Gianarelli. But this car is more than just about what literally meets the eye, because this is an electric sports car. But more than that, it's a lightweight electric sports car, which a lot of the big players have been looking at really hard. The rumours of an electric Porsche Boxster are rife after all. So what do we get? Well, it's got a single electric motor that's mounted in the rear and drives the rear wheels and produces a relatively modest 268 brake horsepower. But thanks to a composite aluminium chassis and composite body panels, it's got a target weight of 1,190 kilograms, which is actually quite light. If you take into account the fact that something lightweight and ice like an Alpine A110 weighs about 1,100 kilos, that's not far off. I'll just have to avoid big dinners. As for performance, it's sort of largely in the same range, so 0 to 62 miles an hour in about 4.5 seconds and just over 140 miles an hour top speed, which is plenty to get yourself into trouble. If you add in the adjustable suspension, which means that you can make the Project V handle like you want it to, it'll be a very, very attractive car. This is all really good stuff. But is this a real Caterham, or is it just some concepty flight of fancy? To find out, I asked my old mate Bob who happens to be the CEO of Caterham. This is an electric coupe. How can that possibly be a Caterham? Because it's simple, lightweight and fun to drive. And they're the three core DNAs of every seven and what Caterham's all about. So how's that happened then? If you were going to produce this in numbers, simple, lightweight and fun to drive, how do you go about translating what Caterhamness is into an electric coupe that doesn't have cycle wings and a really bad heater. So every, everything <laughs> that we focus on is about weight here. Right. So we're saying that we're going to produce this for 1190 kilos and everything on the car has to justify itself from a weight perspective or anything that's not on the car saves us a huge weight. Yeah. We haven't got a frunk or a fruit as I prefer to call it. <laughs> and that saves 10 to 12 kilos. Oh, we straight away? From what? Just because not having the we fixings? We haven't got anything to seal it, the hinges, the latches, right. and the actual tray itself. Yeah. And 
the space it frees up gives us more room to do what we need to do with the crash structure, with the suspension. Yeah. So th there's a big weight saving there, but 12 kilos doesn't sound a lot. But when you're looking through every aspect yeah. of the car, we haven't got an embedded infotainment system. Okay. So we've just got iPhone or Android Auto mirroring. Yeah. And Which is what everybody uses anyway. Exactly. Yeah. And that means we haven't got a big two DIN structure yeah. somewhere in the car or a, an ECU somewhere in the car that is taking weight and space. So it's got an aluminium and composite chassis and then it would have composite body panels if you yes. so you're pulling the weight out of it all the time. Exactly. And it's quite a, a relatively simple setup, so it's a single rear motor. It hasn't got an awful I mean you could make this have four hundred horsepower and make it really, really fast. Why have you gone for a relatively modest horsepower, even in the concept? You could say it had a thousand horsepower and it's a concept car. Why talk about having that kind of slightly modest powertrain? Well, the, the performance of this is similar to, to one of our 420s, 485 kind of model, not 60 in, in, in four and a half seconds. And we feel that that's enough to deliver that fun to drive element of the car. Yeah, I don't think we need to chase the numbers to get to, you know, not to 60 in less than two seconds. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's old. We're more about the dynamic performance of the car. And this is not focused on a track day, yeah. for sure. But if it ends up on a track day, you, know, you don't use that not to 60 on a track day because you're not allowed to speed in the pits. That's the only time you use it is to sell out <laughs> of the pits. You're more interested in dynamic performance around the corners. And that's what we want to deliver with this. So steering feel, involvement. Correct. You know, it, it's got a just, it would have adjustable suspension. So you can set the car up how, I'm assuming, how you prefer it. Yes. You've got a bit of adjustability within the kind of pitch for it then. Yeah, just like a 7. So it's got those same kind of intellectual properties as a 7, but it's a lot more usable, because this feels like a real usable car. We're, we're a small company with limited resources. We can't afford to do a show car, throw it in the bin six months later, and then start doing the real engineering. Right. So from the beginning, we've started with some real engineering. And you know, as you know, this car was manufactured by Ital Design. And because they're part of a, a big OEM, we've very luckily had access to their digital tools. Right. So we mocked up the inside of this virtually, sat inside a virtual mock-up and did all the layout yeah. and packaged every millimetre exactly where we needed it. I think the lack of aggression, like, you know, everything's getting a bit bulky and scary and aggressive looking. This is actually... I just think it's quite stylish, it's quite calm, and I think it means that it won't date quickly. And, and that's what we need, because if you look at the 7, the, the 7 was designed in the 50s, literally, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's, it's been 50 years under the Caterham brand name, and more than a decade as a Lotus 7 before that. Yeah. And it still seems somehow timeless, because it's, it's form over function, yeah? Yeah. And I think Anthony's taken the same approach here, but looked at what we need to deliver from a regulation point of view, today's modern lifestyle. And an important point is that the seven's not going anywhere. And we're gonna produce that car for into, well into the next decade with an ICE engine as a seven. And this is to complement that and grow the company. As I mentioned before, we are a small company. So this has to last us a number of years. You know, we haven't, we're not in a position where we launch a car, make it for three years and do a complete refresh. We just don't have the resources to be able to do that. Mm. So it somehow needs to be timeless. The brand is timeless and the product seems to fit that very well. Interestingly, unlike a lot of other electric vehicles, the battery pack in the Project V is actually split. So there's a portion of it up at the back near the rear axle and another little bit up at the front. Now, given that the battery pack weighs about 330 kilograms, that's not an insignificant thing to split, but it should give the car a bit more of a kind of natural handling balance. I really want to drive it to see how that feels in real life. Underneath the occupant's legs, there's an 80 mil thick battery pack that slightly raises the floor, slightly raises the feet and foot position. So that's why it feels quite So that's why it tipped. feels like you're fairly flat and the same as a seven, really. Yeah. And we did that to keep the hip point of the seat, the height from the ground to where your hip is, yeah. 
where it would be in a seven so or a sports back and car. down. Yeah. Yeah. And then the rest of the battery pack is th double that thickness and behind the, the occupants. Yeah. And by doing that, we keep the overall height of the car really, really low because yeah. we haven't got that skateboard of batteries underneath the car. Underneath everything. Is this the only future for Caterham? Or is there, there seems to be a lot of thought into what makes a Caterham. What's the future for Caterham as a brand? You say Seven's going to keep going. So the next step, obviously, is a Caterham SUV, electric, uh, and then some sort of luxury car, yeah? Well, I haven't seen you for a while, but I didn't realise you turned into a comedian. And it's actually all good news in here as well, because I think this is frankly brilliant, because Caterham hasn't gone all spaceship concepty in here. It's very clean and it's very elegant. And how good does this dash look without having a 14-inch touchscreen plonked right in the middle. Yes, there is a touchscreen down here, but it's relatively small and it's just got CarPlay on it. And then there's kind of a T-shaped center console with uh, the top of the dash that just flares out into these digital but analog looking dials. There's just a pair of them in front of me. And then a really small Caterham style steering wheel. It just feels really calm and really focused on what it needs to do, and that's be a driver's car. Even the, the way that I sit in this car, it's quite low down, and my hips are canted slightly forward, so I feel like I'm sat in the car rather than on it. And then the pedals are all in the right places. It's interesting that when it comes down to it, you don't need loads and loads of different functions. There's a start stop and the gear selector on a rotary switch over here, then a few dials and some toggles down here. Windows, uh, different modes, which it's got three of. There's normal, sport, and then a sprint mode, if you're doing a quali lap around the local car park. Um, after that, there's just AC and fan. You don't need anything else. And this appears to be a two-seater, as I mentioned before, uh, and it is a bit concept car but if you look in the back, there's actually space for two more seats. And because this is the concept, you can have a, a single central rear seat. So this car can actually come as a two-seater with just storage back there, uh, a three-seater with a central rear seat, or a four-seater. And you wouldn't get very big people, but it's a really interesting concept. Personally, I think I'd go for a, a two-seater and then some sort of storage for my backpack. It would be really useful. Of course, if you're in a normal Caterham, a Caterham 7, you'd be used to things rattling, it'd be very, very tight, there'd be no head, well, there's infinite headroom in a Caterham 7 because they usually don't have a roof. But this has got plenty of headroom, mainly because of that canted down hip action that means I'm sat quite low. But there's lovely tactile materials all through the car. This kind of ultra suede on the seats is fantastic. The seats themselves are quite thin, but super supportive. There's even a slot for your mobile phone in the centre console here. They have actually thought of plenty of stuff, but it still feels vaguely like a Caterham. I know that sounds ridiculous when you're looking around this interior, but I think it's got to do with the fact that the steering wheel, apart from the fact it just says Caterham in the middle, is very small. It's very much like a 7. The way you sit down into the car is like a 7. The view's completely different. The acoustics are different, but it's got kind of the spirit of a 7 without being anything like it. I've never been in a 7 that's had all these modern accoutrements. It's, um, it's really impressive. And the one thing I keep coming back to is that this does not feel like a concept car. Everything about it feels like it could be production in six months' time. And that is really interesting. How about practicality? Well, that 55 kWh battery isn't ridiculously small, about the same as you'd get in the average EV hatchback. So you're looking at a possible 249 miles of range if you drive conservatively, which probably means not hammering it everywhere in sprint mode. Plus there's 150 kilowatts of onboard DC charging, so you'll be looking at 20 to 80% in a quarter of an hour. More than convenient enough, even if you're driving with Caterham-ish enthusiasm. I think the interesting thing here is that Caterham has had a really good long look at the weight of an electric sports car, balanced against the kind of performance and space and practicality that you might reasonably expect. This hasn't got neck snapping acceleration, but it's plenty good enough. And if you ally that to where the battery sits and the adjustable suspension, this could be a really confident handling car. And yes, it is coping with about 330 kilograms of battery weight. There's no manual box and there's no noise, admittedly, but this is a really interesting idea. 
Caterham reckons, after it did a proper feasibility study, that the Project V could be out in late 2025 or early 2026 and starting at a price around £80,000. Now that's expensive for a Caterham, but it's pretty good for a junior supercar. Let us know what you think in the comments.